Okay, we uh, have uh, talked about uh, assurance and uh, we're back again uh, dealing with assurance and uh, this one. I mean, all of this stuff is interrelated. We uh, you know, have to look at it quite holistically uh, for the most part. You have to determine um, whether things are working and how and therefore we have to audit in a variety of ways and and you know we've talked about audit we've talked about auditors we've talked about the separation of duties idea we have you know discussed those concepts but a little bit more now on the different types of audits that you will encounter and and uh, possibly be involved in if, if you yourself get into auditing now, there are just general audits which are going to look at, hopefully, everything. Uh, you are going to look at the systems. You are going to look at uh, the risks. You are you know, going to have to do the, uh, the risk analysis. Um, you are going to have to figure out um, what it is that... Uh, can be a danger to the system, what is going to be important to the company, what the assets are, and how to protect them. Um, you are looking at all of this in terms of uh, a general audit. Um, and, you know, we're, we're going to have to do those uh, on occasion on, on a large scale. Uh, there are going to be system audits at various times. That you are going to uh, want to look at a particular system in isolation. Um, <coughs> that will tell you some things, but of course, um, there are going to be interrelations between the individual systems that you are using, that you have, that uh, we are also going to have to assess in, in terms of a, uh, a large scale, more general audit. Now, one of the things um, that uh, sometimes you tend to forget is a management review. And of course, this is looking at not necessarily the systems, but the, the systems of management. And therefore, you know, we're, we're dealing with things like uh, the policies. You know, look at the documentation. What are the policies? What are the procedures? Are, is there anything missing? from the policies. Is uh, management taking care of his management aware of all the things that need to be taken care of in terms of threats to the organization um, from, the, uh, from the management perspective? So what do we do with regard to management? And, and yet yeah, we have to review all of that. Is there anything missing? that can create a security risk, a security problem, a security issue. And we need to, we need to assess that. Uh, we need to judge that fairly critically, um, hopefully without being critical of management themselves on a personal level. This is not an ad hominem attack. This is a review of the systems of management, of the tools of management. And as I say, you know, an awful lot of this is going to be in regard to the documentation, the policies themselves, the procedures themselves, the baselines, the standards, the guidelines that are being used, the, uh, the security frameworks that this organization sees as necessary. You know, are they suitable to this organization and to uh, this enterprise's endeavors? Making sure that that uh, is, is keeping them protected. It is giving them what they need in terms of assessing their security posture. Um, so, that is a, a different type of assurance requirement. Then there's penetration testing. Now, penetration testing 
uh, very often just known as pen testing, is uh, something that people think is a lot of fun. Um, but there, there are all kinds of things that you have to do, that you have to be aware of, that you have to pay attention to when you are looking at a penetration test. Is this, uh, well, you have to know more than the guys who are doing your penetration test very often. You, you have to be aware of what it is that this or a, a certain type of penetration testing is giving you because there are a number of different types of penetration test. Uh, there are physical penetration tests. Those tend to be the most fun, trying to sneak into places. Um, of course, the easiest way to do that is just carry a clipboard. Anybody who is carrying a clipboard and looks confident obviously belongs there, so you can get in anywhere. Uh, oh, you want to do a physical penetration on some organization? Tell you what you do. You get a, a dolly, you have a bunch of cardboard boxes that used to contain candy bars. What are you now? You're the vending machine guy. The security guards will open the doors for you. So, uh, you know, anyways, like I said, you know, that's physical penetration testing. It tends to be fun, but you, you need to uh, uh, find ways to address those types of problems. You know, do you have, uh, well, we'll talk about physical security when we talk about physical security and, and territoriality. And, and do your employees have... Uh, a sense of territoriality, a t sense of ownership of the company and whether or not they'll, they'll let anybody in. But that's, uh, as I say, you know, that's when we talk about physical security. But penetration testing comes in a variety of forms. That's only one. Um, there are uh, penetration tests to be run on the applications. There are penetration tests to be run on the communications, on the networks. There are penetration tests that are to be run specifically on the access controls. You know, do, do the access controls actually control access? Um, all kinds of these things, and they have to be done in a variety of ways. And, you know, somebody uh, may be crackerjack at doing one particular type of penetration test, and that may not be a type of penetration that tells you anything about your organization. So if your organization passes a penetration test, what does that tell you? If it fails a penetration test, what does that actually tell you? What does that mean? What is the significance to you and your enterprise? And you know, that ha all has to be assessed. Um, all kinds of things with regard to penetration tests. Oh, one of the cute ones is if we are dealing with, um, as I say, the, the physical penetration tests and somebody is actually trying to break into your uh, factory at night, uh, you got to give them a get out of jail free card. Uh, you know, if somebody catches them, calls the police, uh, you know, they've, they've, you give them your number type of thing. But if you're out for dinner, uh, you know, uh, so generally speaking, a letter, but also, you know, some contact information of somebody who's going to be around at the time. Well, and of course, if you're, if you are asking them to try to penetrate at unusual times, we need to have somebody, you know, some phone that's going to be answered all the time. Uh, because otherwise, you know, they get thrown in jail for the weekend. Uh, that's going to show up on your bill. Definitely at overtime rates. So, yeah, you got to do a lot of careful analysis for penetration testing. What is it that you want the guy to do? And what do you think it's going to do for you?